Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at Moscone West at the Professional Business Women of California Conference. 6,000 women, this thing's been going on for 28 years. It's a pretty amazing show. We see a lot of big uh, women in tech conferences. But this is certainly one of the biggest and it's all about diversity, not just women. And of course, if there's a women in tech event, who are we going to see? Sandy <laughs> Carter. Uh, so Sandy, so great to see you. CEO of Silicon Blitz and, uh, and have been involved with PBWC for a while. Yeah, I, um, I had suggested to Congresswoman Jackie, when I saw her about three or four years ago, about doing something special for the senior women. And so I proposed this leadership summit, and you know what they always say, if you suggest something, be prepared to execute it. <laughs> so she said, would you help us get this going? So right. three years ago, I started the Senior Leaders Forum here. And uh, yesterday we had that forum. We had 75 amazing women from all the great companies of California, Chevron, Clorox, IBM, Microsoft, Intel, Amazon, you right, name right. it, all the great companies here in the Bay. Oh, Salesforce, Airbnb, blah, 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 all go. So blah, that was blah. like a little uh, like a little conference at the conference? Yeah, so it was for C-suite only. Okay. And it was about 75 women, and we do three TED Talks and we pick out talks that are hot, but that are very actionable for companies. Okay. So yesterday, Jeff, we talked about uh, millennials, how to have inclusion of millennials in your workforce. So 50% of the workforce by 2020 will be millennials. Is that so a harder challenge really than just straight important. up diversity? <laughs> it may be, <laughs> but I had um, Allison Erwiner and Irby Foster from Clorox come and speak, and they did a TED Talk, and then we actually do uh, little like little workshops to okay. action. Okay, what would a millennial program look like? Um, our second topic was around innovation. So how do you link diversity to innovation? And there's so many studies, Carnegie Mellon, Silicon Valley, Harvard, Deloitte, that shows there is a linkage, but how do you get the linkage? Right. And so for all these amazing The linkage between better business outcomes, correct? That's right. Better outcomes. That's right. In fact, the latest study from Harvard came out the end of 2016 that showed not only with diverse teams do you get more innovation, but more profitable innovation, right, which right. is everybody's bailiwick today. Right, right. And so we had uh, Jeremiah Owang of Crowd Companies, who's an innovation expert, come and, and really do that session for us. And then last but not least, we talked about uh, diversity and inclusion, primarily inclusion in the next century. What is that going to look like? Right. And so we saw some facts about you know, what's going on in changes in population, changes in diversity, and then how we as companies should manage programs in order to tap into those changes. Right. So it was an awesome, awesome session. And then of course we had Pat Waters from LinkedIn. She is a chief talent officer there. She came and kind of closed it out with her definition of inclusion. So it was powerful. And you won an award. I won an award, Congratulations, yeah. what did so, you win? So a game changer for PBWC, and I'm really proud of it because last year we had Serena Williams speak and she was the first recipient. So I guess you'd say I'm in great company because it's now you know Serena and I with this great award. Yeah, absolutely. So before we went on air, we were talking about some of this kind of next gen diversity, thinking about getting that into programming languages. And you brought up, there was some conversation around bots, and obviously chat bots are all the rage, and AI and ML uh, is driving a lot of this, but ultimately someone's got to write the software to teach these things how to behave. So you're going to run into the same types of issues if you don't have kind of a diversity of the thinking of the way the rules and those bots work as you have in any other situation where you kind of have singular thinking. Yeah, I think, Jeff, you're right on. In fact, I think it's really going to accelerate the desire for diverse teams. So, you know, if you think about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and bots, you have to train the computer, right? The computer's not naturally smart. And so there is a team that actually uses a corpus of knowledge and trains the, the bot. If the data that goes in, you know, my dad always said, garbage in, garbage out. Right, if the right. data that goes in is biased, then the output is biased. Right. And we're seeing that now. For instance, um, I was just looking at some VR headsets. And people are now looking at virtual reality. You know you get a little nauseous. And they've been tweaking it with artificial intelligence so that you don't get as nauseous, but it was done by all men. And so as a result, it greatly improved the nauseousness of men but not women. Right. And that's just one example. Like you want your product to well, go that's for weird. 100% Do you think that would be pretty biology? biological. You would, but there are so apparently differences. Yeah, we talked to a doctor yesterday. There's apparently differences in motion sickness between the two, and if you only have one set of data, you don't have the other. Right, right. 
But then there's this other kind of interesting danger with machine learning, and I think, I think we see it a lot in, in kind of what's going on in the news and, and causing a lot of uh, diversion within the, the country in that you know, the algorithms are going to keep feeding you more of that which you already have demonstrated an affinity to. So it's almost like you, know, you have to purposefully break the things or specifically tell it either through uh, active action or programming that, no, please send me stuff that I'm not necessarily seeing all the time. Please give me stuff that's going to give me a diversity of points of view and opinion and sources because it feels like with your basic kind of recommendation engine, it's going to keep sending you more of the same and kind of rat hole you down one little little track. That is true and that's why, you know, today we have a panel and we're going to be talking about, especially for AI and bots, you must have diverse teams. Um, you know, from the session this morning, I really loved one of the speakers, Kim Rivera from HP, and she said, you know, it's hard, but we just said, look, we've got to have 50% women on the board, we've got to do this. And, and I think the same thing's going to be true for AR bots. Uh, Jeff, if you don't have a diverse team, you will not get the right answer from, from a bot. Right, right. And you know, bots are so powerful, and um, I was just with you know, a group of nine-year-old girls, and we had a coding camp, and I asked them, what do you want to do? And all of them wanted to do bots. Really? Um, they had all played what with kind of bots Zootop did they want to do? Well, they all had played with a Zootopia bot from Disney. Okay. So, I don't know, did you see Zootopia? I, I did not see it, I heard uh, it was a great movie. It's a great movie, animated movie bunnies, of the bunnies, year. Bunnies, bunnies, bunnies as cops, right? That's right, in fact, the bunny is what they made into a chat bot. Okay. And 10 million kids use that chat bot to get a little badge. And so now all the kids are into bots. They use bots to uh, remind them to brush their teeth, to do their homework. Um, in fact, there was a chat bot written by a 14-year-old boy in Canada. That's a homework reminder. It's, like, it's actually really quite good. All I'm thinking of is the is the Microsoft little uh, oh, yeah. pen. That didn't, I guess timing is everything. Yeah, timing is everything, that's right. <laughs> that one didn't work so well. But I guess what I would just leave with people is that when you're looking at this great, great new technology, for AI and bots in particular, you must have a diverse team. You must look at your data. Your data's got to be unbiased. Like you said, if you just keep doing the same old thing, you're going to get the same old answer. Right, so you've right. got to do something different. Right, and you're doing all kinds of stuff, right? You're working with the girls in tech uh, on the board there. I think you're doing some stuff with the Athena Alliance who's driving to get more uh, women on, on uh, boards. boards. So you're really kind of putting your toes in all kinds of, of puddles to really help move this thing. Because this also came up in the keynote, it's not a strategy problem, it's an execution problem. That's right. And because I'm so passionate about tech, I love tech, um, and I see this linkage today that has been never really been there that strong before, but now it's almost like if you don't have diversity, your AI and bots are going to fail. Forrester just said that AI and bots is the future, so companies have to pay attention to this now. Right, I really think right. it's the moment of time. Okay, so we're running out of time. I'll give you the last word. What are one or two kind of concrete things that you've seen in your experience that leaders can, can do, like came up today in the keynote, tomorrow, to really help move the ball down the field? So I think one is to make sure you have a diverse team uh, and make sure that it represents diversity of thought. And that could be age, it could be gender, it could be, um, it could be sexual orientation, race. You got to look at that diversity of team, that's one. Secondly, just by having a diverse team doesn't mean you're going to get great output. You've got to be inclusive. You've got to give these folks great projects. Like millennials, you know, give them a passion project. Let them go and do something that can really make a difference. And then third, I think you have to um, test and make sure what you're delivering out there represents that cognitive diversity of thought. So make sure that you're not just putting stuff out there just to get it out there, but really double checking it. I think those are three actionable things that you can do tomorrow. All right, that's great, Sandy. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks for stopping by. Uh, we, just, we just checked Sandy's calendar and then we know where to take the cube because <laughs> she's all over the place. All right, so she's Sandy Carter. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from the Professional Business Women of California Conference in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. <laughs>